Okay. Hello, everyone. I'm Zen, and today we're going to present our work on deepfake text detection. This is joint work with Jamming, Sifat, Abdullah, Yunjin, Prantapa, Mubin, and Pimmel. We define deepfake, or AI-generated text, as any text that is produced by newer language models, or LMs in short. And language models are models that are trained to predict probability distributions over a vocabulary, given some linguistic context. For language generation, the model samples a word from the predicted distribution and is then conditioned on that and all previously sampled words to generate another word and so on. Since 2017, transformers have been the dominant architecture for language modeling. And some popular transformers are models like GPT-2, GPT-3, Lama, and many more. I should mention that we did this research in pre-chat GPT times, and the models and data sets we evaluated represented the state of the art in AI text back then. So why is detecting AI-generated text really even important? Well, language models are able to produce convincing text on a number of topics, and that means they can be misused in a number of ways. For example, bad actors can use them to generate misinformation and fake news, compromise the integrity of online review systems, launch phishing attacks, whereas students can use them to finish homework assignments. The point is that our inability to distinguish between human and AI written text can have serious consequences. And that makes it imperative that we have detection tools to defend against AI generated text. Fortunately, researchers have proposed several defenses for this purpose, and these defenses can be categorized into three major categories. The first is simply taking pre-trained language models and fine-tuning them to distinguish between human and AI written text. The defense in the second category leverages the idea that in order to generate coherent text, language models need to sample high probability words from the predicted distribution. So if we take a piece of AI-generated text and pass it through any pre-trained language model, it will have many more high-probability words compared to human-written text, allowing it to be detected as AI-generated. Finally, the defense in the third category, called FAST, uses the finding that language models often struggle to maintain semantic consistency between generated named entities. For example, they may refer to Tim Cook as the CEO of Apple in one sentence, and then confuse him with Bill Gates in the next. So FAST uses this entity tracking graph to be able to differentiate and flag AI-generated text. Now, some of these defenses are trained only on news data sets so that they can detect AI-generated fake news, whereas the others are trained on broad categories of text so they can detect text from any domain. We reproduced the original performance of all the existing defenses and showed that they all demonstrate high detection performance in the range of 80 to 99% F1 score on their test sets. With this in mind, we asked three key questions in our paper with regards to these defenses. First of all, what is their performance in the real world? We just saw they have very high performance on their test sets, but those test sets are from the exact same distribution as the training data. Whereas in the real world, data can be from different distributions, say from a different language model. And the performance of these defenses in these scenarios is unknown. Secondly, are they robust against adversarial attacks? We find that most defenses do not generalize well, nor are they robust, which makes us ask the question, can we make these defenses more robust? In this regard, we take a deeper look at FAST, which is one of the most promising existing defense, and suggest some ways moving forward. Now, to evaluate the performance of these defenses in a more realistic setting, we collected real-world AI-generated text from two sources. The first is from text generation as a service platforms, which allow users to generate arbitrary content on a topic simply by giving it a title sentence. The other data set is from a GPT-3-based bot, which, pretending to be a real user, communicated with Reddit users over a number of days. And we've since released these data sets to the research community. We evaluated the defenses the, on these real-world data sets 
And while we only show a subset of the F1 scores here, our findings are quite consistent and show that open domain defenses, which are trained on a broad categories of text, show the most significant degradation in their performance. On the other hand, defenses which are built on top of Roberta, which is a language model which proposed several improved pre-training strategies, tend to generalize better. Strasser mentioned that FAST, which outperforms all the existing defenses here, is in fact also built on top of the Roberta model. Now I'll hand out the presentation to Jane. Thank you, Zeng. Uh, let's continue the talk. So to answer the second question, we evaluated the adversarial robustness of these defenses. Uh, in particular, we propose uh, practical low-cost attacks uh, which do not require training new language models or fine-tuning language models over large data sets. Here I will give you two examples of such low-cost uh, attacks we proposed. For the first example, we simply change the configuration of the language model at, at the text generation time. For the second example, we propose a queryless adversarial perturbation attack which perturbs the text after the text generation. Now let's look into each of them and see how they work. So to generate coherent text, language models sample high probability words from a predicted distribution using various sampling strategies such as nucleus or top P sampling. It restricts the sampling space um, uh, with high probability uh, to high, uh, so it restricts the sampling space to n highest probability words such that its cumulative probability is equal to a value of p. So this p value is also called decoding parameter. It turns out existing defenses are trained on text generated under a specific decoding parameter. So we ask the question, would these defenses still be effective at de detecting text generated under a different decoding parameter? The answer is not really, which means changing the decoding parameter is a simple and low cost way to break many defenses. And compared to other defenses, we notice the performance of FAST degrades visibly less under this attack suggesting that it is able to learn more robust features by using the idea of tracking the consistency of named entities from a piece of text. And next, we propose a queryless black box adversarial prohibition attack, which we call DFT folder. We start with a piece of AI-generated text, which is correctly classified by the detector. And with the help of a pre-trained language model, we introduce word-level substitution to it such that it can be reclassified as human written while maintaining its original meaning and linguistic quality. And this uh, next, this table presents the evasion rate of the ft Fuller attack. Um, so evasion rate is basically the percentage of perturbed text which uh, evade the detection. Uh, the higher the number, uh, the better the attack performance. So we see DFT Fuller achieved a high uh, evasion rate for most of the defenses. And uh, you can also see BERT defense showed better robustness than FAST does, but it broke down under some of other low cost attacks which uh, we are not showing in this talk due to the space limitation. Um, overall, throughout the experiments, we found FAST to be the best performing defense. And it's worth investigating why it is so robust, uh, which leads to our third research question. So we look into the architecture of FAST. It is a very sophisticated defense with many moving parts. It's built on top of a uh, pretrain Roberta, uh, and it's then augmented with many different modules, uh, including a named entity graph which tracks the semantic mistakes made by the language model, and a Wikipedia embedding module, 
and a, name, uh, a next sentence prediction module, as well as a LSTM, which tracks the text coherence. We wondered if there is a co core component of FAST which makes it so robust. Therefore, we performed several ablation experiments over FAST. And among our ablation experiments, we created a simpler version of FAST, which we call distilled FAST. And it turns out the performance and the robustness of this distilled FAST is really equivalent to that of FAST. Suggesting that this neighbor entity graph is really at the heart of the fast uh, robustness. Therefore, uh, we conclude that incorporating higher level semantic features like entity graph, knowledge graph, etc., can robustify AI generated text detection. Since we did the research, uh, the landscape and the modality of large language models has changed significantly, which perhaps made the detection more challenging. Um, these days, with the help of chatbots like ChatGPT, uh, one can generate high quality text, and instead of um, crafting strategies to evade the detection, one can actually delegate that task to the chatbot itself. Here, let me show you an example uh, we ask ChatGPT to write an article on um, the benefits of generated AI in healthcare. ChatGPT gave us this uh, article, and we feed it through OpenAI's detector. The article is uh, flagged as likely AI generated, and we then follow up with another prompt. We ask ChatGPT to rewrite the article in a more informal tone, and this is the output. We do the same thing, we uh, fit it through the detector again. It, the article was immediately uh, flagged as unclear uh, if it is AI generated by the detector. So this is a very simple example, but it opens the doors of evasion strategies based on prompt engineering. And in future, for future, uh, for future work, researchers need to um, Propose detection schemes which are more robust against such prompt-based attacks. Well, that's it for our today's presentation. Uh, we have more experiments, attacks, and defense findings presented in our paper. I encourage, I encourage you to check out. Uh, also, we open source the code and the data sets at this link. Now, we are happy to uh, answer any questions that you may have. Do you have any questions? Uh, you can use that microphone or this one. Yeah. Excellent talk. Uh, I had a question. Like, where do you guys see the future of like this? Uh, it's like such a field of uh, study, right? Like, as these uh, as these uh, AI chatbots keep getting more advanced, is there like a way uh, for it for us to ever catch up uh, in uh, uh, detecting these AI generated text or are all bets lost, and we should like spend our time doing some other research where our efforts are more, uh, I mean, rewarding. I guess. Yeah, I think so. I think it's going to be a challenging problem. Uh, and the thing is, as you scale up these models, right, the capacity of these models increases, and they are able to generate more and more consistent text. So the artifacts that we currently rely on to detect text may not be there. But I think, so far, no matter how much you scale these models up there's still no factualness prior or training objective in these models. So that means, and we've all seen examples of ChatGPT making all sorts of incoherent text and inconsistencies, contradictions. So if we look at the semantic space, things like FAST, and probably make more advanced versions of FAST, which really tap into sort of a higher level feature uh, to detect such uh, inconsistencies in language models, I think there's quite um, some hope uh, in that direction. So I won't say that all bets are off so soon. Thanks. Uh, due to time constraint, we have what time for one more question. Uh, maybe take that question offline. Thank you. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, Rob Cunningham from the University of Pittsburgh. So first of all, thank you very much for a great talk. Really interesting. I also want to look to the future a little bit. Um, I was interested in your, your uh, query engineering. And I would not have guessed that simply telling it to become more informal would have bypassed 
the, the, the detection that, that you had described. Can you tell us a little bit more about some of the other things that you played with in that space and maybe explain why that particular prompt was able to bypass the detection? Right. Oh, so the, the last, uh, the prompt engineering attack that we saw is not basically, not really a part of our research because by the time we did this, these prompt engineering models were not really there. Uh, but we did do similar attacks using some older strategies like prompting language models with particular starting tokens, and then we saw that uh, the output completely flipped the prediction. And my guess is because these defenses are trained exactly to predict very particular patterns, which only exist when you prompt the model or don't prompt it in a particular way. So the distribution shift between prompting it in one way or another way completely sort of puts the model in a different state space, and it generates completely different and novel text, which the defense probably has never seen in the, uh, in the training phase, and that probably puts it to uh, you know, flag it as human-written or the opposite direction. Okay, yeah. thank you. Thank you. All right, let's thank the speakers again.